charcoal, you're going to save having half of the carbon that was in that stock. It's going to become now charcoal, and charcoal doesn't break down. So um, when you put it in soil, because it doesn't break down, it's like vermiculite or perlite. And unlike perlite, which, does anybody know where perlite comes from? Okay, I'll tell you. It comes from two mines in eastern Oregon. That is the source of all the perlite that we use in our soil. So it's mined from the earth, and then it, it's like a volcanic kind of rock. And then what they do is they heat it at high temperature to expand it. So it has that porosity. Now, you know, that uses a lot of energy. And then it's trucked all the way from Eastern Oregon over here to put in our soil. So we can make these little biochar pellets that are gonna act just like perlite, but better because they're carbon. And carbon does amazing things in soil. Carbon is what microbes need to flourish. So it's not only a substitute for perlite, it's also a substitute for some of the peat that we use. And it's a local natural resource that we can use and we can um, combat climate change at the same time. So let's see, I've got a couple more things to tell you about. This is, anybody know what this is? Have you seen these before? <laughs> It's a hemp stalk. <laughs> it looks like wood. It's, it's tough, you know? There's a lot of lignin in here, and this makes excellent biochar. So as soon as I'm done talking, I want everybody to who wants to to follow me outside, and I'm going to show you how to turn this into, into biochar very easily. The other thing I want to tell you about is this product here. It's called wood vinegar. And this is also a byproduct of the charcoal making process. It takes some more equipment than what I have, so I don't make it currently. This is a bamboo wood vinegar that's actually imported from China, but it's a very good product. And what it is, it's got 200 different chemicals in it, and it's condensed smoke. So if you've ever experienced liquid smoke as a flavoring or a health additive, um, that's what this is. And this has a number of wonderful things that it does. It's, it, if you dilute it only a little bit, it's a great pesticide. So it'll kill aphids and white flies, um, soft-bodied insects, and I use it a lot for that in my garden. It's also a growth stimulant at the same time, so it will really perk up your plants. And I have this available for sale outside by the biochar stuff. Uh, along with that, I have an article that I wrote. I am now, um, I'm a soil consultant. So this is an article about the wood vinegar, and I have copies of this out on my table. You're welcome to take one. The other thing that I did, just in preparation to talk to you all today, was I went and, so I, I work for a lot of different agricultural um, enterprises, not just cannabis, but I work in the agriculture industry in general, and um, I do a lot of research, and I read a lot of the literature on what biochar does for soil and, um, you know, how it helps microbial life and does a lot of other great things like retaining nutrients so we don't leach and lose so much nitrogen into the water table. But I made just a little list of um, abstracts of papers that are really relevant, I think, to cannabis cultivation and biochar. And so this is for also for you to take. I have a few copies of this, but I just want to read a couple of things from this for you. So here's one. The paper's called Pelletized Biochar is a Carrier for AM Fungi in the Open Farm System of Inoculum Production in Compost and Vermiculite Mixtures. So this is the kind of research that people are doing with biochar and finding um, how friendly it is to mycorrhizals and other microbial uh, life forms. Here's another one. Biochar enhances yield and quality of tomato under reduced irrigation. So you know, if you put too much water in a plant, you can kind of dilute the flavors and qualities of a tomato for sure. A grape is another plant that you don't want to overwater that plant because you're going to dilute some of the, the chemical, chemicals and um, flavonoids and, and other um, you know, flavors and terpenes and things that you want in that plant. And I don't know for sure if this is a concern with cannabis or not, but 
We do have a concern with water use. Um, so biochar definitely can have an impact on water use in your soil. Here's another one. Influence of biochar, mycorrhizal inoculation, and fertilizer rate on growth and flowering of perligonium plants. Or biochar is a partial replacement of peat in a biomixture formulated with three types of soils to degrade pesticides. Um, pelleted biochar, chemical and physical properties show potential use as a substrate in container nurseries. Um, the biochar effect, plant resistance to biotic stresses. I found in my work with biochar that it is a really good factor for creating disease suppressive soils. So if you want your soil to be healthy, biochar is a really good building block for healthy soil. And you know, that's where you start. It all builds from there. Here's another one. Biochar is a substitute for vermiculite in potting mix for hybrid poplar. And one, the potential use of biochar in growing media. So this is just a small sample of some of the research literature that's out there on biochar that uh, I think could be re relevant to this industry. And I also want to let you know that I do a lot of biochar workshops in this area. I'm on the board of the Spiral Living Center. Has everybody heard of the Spiral Living Center? No. Oh, wow. Let me tell you about the Spiral Living Please. Center. It's our local permaculture institute. It's Yay. in Tequilma at the Frog Farm. Frog Farm. And we do, once a year at least, we do a Skillshare event where we have a day of hands-on classes, learning how to do things like making cheese or, um, you know, butchering rabbits, you know, all these back-to-the-land living skills and permaculture skills. And then we have also other different special events throughout the year. We did a fermentation festival in October that was a lot of fun. We learned how to ferment and pickle everything you could imagine under the sun. And yeah, yum. So the Spiral Living Center is your local resource for permaculture information. We have a library there. And like I said, we do classes. We are also now, um, we've been focusing a lot of our effort for the last couple of years trying to get our local radio station up and running. Yeah! KXCJ. Okay, and there's an open house for that radio station later this afternoon, I think starting at four. So if you're in town, stop by. It's in the IV Medical Center. It's across the street from the building supply, kind of. Um, hopefully you can find it. So um, you should know about the Spiral Living Center. And I think that might be all I have for you, but just keep an eye out for my classes. Also, I am a consultant, so if you have a situation where you're thinking about using biochar, you have questions, I can help you. Yeah. And thanks for your attention. Thank you. Please come out and take a break because we're going to show you, I've got this giant 55 gallon drum, we're going to turn some hemp stalks into biochar, so come out and see that.